Hello everyone, welcome to um, the Digital Thread webinar series. In this final installment, we'll be looking at field service slash aftermarket. Okay, let's just jump on to the agenda for today. So I'll give a brief introduction of myself and then we'll look at um, what is uh, the digital thread and then we'll look at today's topic which is field service slash aftermarket but we'll be focusing on these four topics customer experience management we'll be focusing on part instance and serial numbers and lastly we'll be looking briefly into uh, the service bar yeah. and then later on after I'm done with my slides we'll look at the Q&A so if you have any questions on the questions section, please uh, put in your, your questions there. And at the end, once I'm done with my slides, I'll look at your questions and I'll try and answer them within this session. Okay. So um, my name is Wisani Chabalala and I am a PLM specialist at PES Vision US. I have 10 years experience with PTC products. I have a background in mechanical engineering. So within those 10 years was me being the end user of PTC products. Okay. Let's just quickly look at who we are or what our company is. So um, we're formerly called Boundary Systems. Now we are called PDS Vision US. And how that came about is that Boundary Systems was founded back in 2006. And in 2008, PDS Vision Group was founded in Stockholm, Sweden. And then in the year 2014, uh, Boundary System expanded its global operations into South Africa. In the year 2018, uh, PDS Vision Group acquired Boundary Systems and starting in the year 2022, we are officially trading as PDS Vision US. Yeah. So who are we? We are a technology leader uh, because we are the first PTC global reseller and preferred services provider. We are a software solutions developer for design and manufacturing. Some of our capabilities are consulting implementation services. So if you have a uh, windshield and you'd like it to be implemented in your company, uh, on site, on the cloud, we offer those services. We also offer professional training. We offer cloud hosting. We also offer support or help desk. Okay. So as PDS Vision, we have uh, strategic par partners and solutions that we work with. So our main partner is PTC, but then we also have other partners that also help in your product lifecycle, whether it's uh, uh, for creating your technical documentation or it's for creating renderings or it's for simulations or it's for molding. We have a partner that will assist you with that. So let us jump into today's topic, which is digital thread. So the digital thread concept is a concept that allows um, companies to be able to um, work together within the different departments, okay? So it also allows those uh, different departments to also collaborate uh, when working on one product or on many products. So looking at the first circle, so it's split into four circles. So looking at the first circle, that is our product visualization circle. So the product visualization circle covers things like um, CAD management, CAD itself, simulation, technical publications, requirements and management uh, and document management. And in the second circle, uh, that covers quality management, bomb management, change management, and so on. On the third circle, that's what, um, that covers uh, things like design for manufacturing, 
supply integration, uh, model-based definition additive manufacturing. So that is the digital manufacturing circle. And the last circle is your connected circle that covers things like IoT smart products, uh, IoT smart operations, augmented reality, and all of this uh, would cover the different departments that you might have in your company. So for instance, the engineering department mostly deals with the CAD and the CAD management, and then you get the manufacturing department, which deals with the bill of materials management, uh, the parts classification, um, and you get the quality department that deals with the quality management. So depending on what your company's needs are, you can use this digital uh, thread concept to figure out in which circle you need to get out of. So if you're starting, for instance, in with your CAD, uh, with your CAD, then you can move out to things like bomb management so that you can create your manufacturing bill of materials. Yeah. So for those who have been following the digital thread series, you um, might have seen or you have seen this car that we have here. So that's the car that we've been using throughout our series to show how the different departments can interact and also collaborate in building uh, this car and also uh, servicing this car and redesigning this car, starting off in the concept phase. Okay. So just jumping on to uh, today's topic, which is field service and aftermarket. So looking at some of the challenges that a field service engineer or a field uh, service technician or a service technician would sort of get is, for instance, the inability to input on a product on the product data. So they're not able to um, give the engineering department input on, for instance, um, uh, product enhancements to say that this particular component is always breaking. If you were to add an additional bracket or if you were to investigate adding an additional bracket, that would possibly help in strengthening this particular component. That they're not able to do. Uh, with field service engineers, they have their own department and with any documentation that they have is kept within the department and not shared throughout the organization. Another thing is the inability to track service changes on a product. So if you have um, serialized uh, components in your product and those need to be captured. In other companies, yes, they do have some, some form of system that they can go and capture and substitute uh, serial numbers, but then those are kept in that system and it's not shared with the engineers or with the manufacturing department. And lastly, it's the inability to support and collaborate with other departments. So as with the initial um, challenge, the service engineers are not able to communicate whatever uh, enhancements that they might have on a product because they don't have that interoperability between the different departments or they don't have uh, that collaboration between the different departments. So, this is where the digital thread comes in. So with the digital thread, everything is accessible and you have one source of truth. So the engineering department will, for instance, uh, create the design, the 3D design in the CAD authoring application. And then from that, create an engineering bill of materials. And then from that engineering of bill of materials, a manufacturing bill of materials can be created. A service bill of material can be created and service instructions can be created from that service bill of material. And when that uh, CAD updates through uh, the change management uh, process, then the engineering bill of materials and everything that uh, is uh, related to that, um, that design can also update. Okay, so. For today's session, we're looking at these two. So we're gonna look at complaints, which is customer experience management, 
and we're going to look a bit into uh, the service bill of materials. Okay. So when you extend the digital thread to service or to the service department, you enable the field service engineer to get accurate uh, information that they need. So how that happens is that from the engineering bill of materials, a service bill of materials can be created. And from that service bill of materials, there can be illustrations of what the product looks like or uh, the service part, the, the part that needs to be serviced looks like. There can be a parts list that's generated from that. There can also be parts catalogs and other service content. And since this is controlled using change management, uh the field service engineer will get the correct information all the time okay so for today's demo we're going to look at the scenario so a customer um came back with a complaint that um the gearbox in their car does not engage certain gears and it makes it difficult for them to drive the car so an investigation was done and the outcome of the investigation is that um, the drive shaft that was replaced uh, in that cupa number caused the damage to the gearbox because that drive shaft was bending and because of that bending of the drive shaft it damaged the gearbox so if you've watched our um, previous webinars the quality engineer webinar you would have seen how to create that cupa and how to go and make those changes to the shaft. So if you're replacing the shaft and what the cause of the change was, okay? So the proposed solution is to replace the gearbox with a new gearbox. So on the car, the gearbox needs to change, but since the gearbox is one of the parts that have a serial number, there are a couple of things that we are required to do. One of them is to update uh, the assembly with the gearbox new serial number so if we're replacing the old gearbox we'll need to update that assembly to reflect the new serial number we'll also need to replace the gearbox in the actual car but before we do all of that we'll need to lock this customer complaint in the system so that it's available for uh, everyone in the company and it can also form as part of input for the next design enhancement Okay, so this is the car that we're looking at. So underneath the car, going looking underneath the car, we have um, that there's the gearbox that is in question on the car. So just checking which other things could be affected by this gearbox. And then we're looking at the drivetrain assembly. It shows us that, okay, so at the moment, the gearbox has also has a top level assembly that we're going to have a look at so in that top level assembly we can see that the additional things that are on that gearbox there so those will also need to be uh, added okay so as we looked at the steps that need to be followed uh, the first thing that we need to do is to create a customer experience so that that customer experience or that customer complaint can be added and saved into the system so that it can form uh, as a reference when a new design is being created or if uh, there's a service manual that needs to be created or if there's anything that is related to that customer complaint. So a customer complaint is basically a form in Winchell uh, that allows you uh to capture customer experiences so those customer experiences could be a complaint from a customer so a customer is complaining about a particular product it could be a product how the product functions it could just be a query from the customer so if customer is asking certain questions so if you're getting the same type of queries from a customer then uh, and it's not included in your user manual it could be something that would feed into your next user manual that you release so you can go to those questions 
and then add a frequently asked questions on your user manual and then just add the answers to those frequently asked questions okay so the good thing with customer experience management is that you can link your uh, customer experience to the affected objects so you can run a report at the end uh, of a an object's life cycle, for instance, or if you're planning on making a better derivative of that particular product that you have, you can go and have a look at the complaints that were logged against that uh, particular uh, product so that you make those announcements for the future product. Okay. You can also capture actions that were taken to address any of the complaints. So if it's a complaint, you look at the actions that were taken if it's a query you look at the responses that were given to the customer so that you can add that to your frequently asked questions to make it easier for customers to access answers yeah All right so now we're going to look at how to create a uh, customer experience in Winshow. so you go to the quality context and create it from there and then once in the form you specify the date of the complaint. You can also specify where this complaint happened. So in my case, it happened at our Texas race cars distributor. So I can add that in there. And the country that it happened in is the United States. And how it was reported is that the owner of the car went to a Texas race car and then reported that. And then where it happened or where the issue initiated, we're not sure but we know that the original country is the US. And then I can go and add um, additional classifications, product quality complaints, so the issue with the product. And then we can add a summary of what the customer is complaining about. So in our case is that uh, the gears are not engaging. So the second and third gear are not engaging when the customer is driving and this is only after three weeks of the customer driving the car so we'll need to add that into uh, our summary to make it a bit better you can add additional information as well as to supporting the statement from the customer so if there's anything that is related to this then you can add that. So since we did our investigations on our side, we know that this particular car that we logging the complaint for um, has recently had its um, drive shaft change. So since it had its drive shaft changed, we add that information so that whoever's going to be reviewing this knows uh, what is happening with this particular car and the person that is logging this the customer is tim roberts so we'll add tim roberts there and we'll add tim roberts as the initial reporter we'll say yes tim roberts is the primary content contact if there are other people then we'd add them there and then the product that is affected that is the car so you can go into windshield and then search for the car using its uh, part number or name and then since all of our cars have serial numbers and we'll add that serial number or VIN number for the car and then since it's one car that is affected for the quantity will be one and that is each but then we know that the issue is with the gearbox not really the car so we're going to add the gearbox here as well that is used in the car and we're going to add the exact serial number for that gearbox yep. and then once because it's one gearbox that's affected we'll say one and then the unit is each and then this is the primary component that is affected and then we can add additional codes as well so product function is the issue and then once all of that has been added then we can move on to the second page so in the second page, you can add additional um, supporting documents. You can add, if it's a video of a customer showing you uh, the issue with uh, whatever product they're complaining about, then you'll be able to see that. If 
is additional uh, reports like we have here our gearbox test report you can add that as well okay so once a customer complaint has been created or customer experience has been created you are able to see the details on it you are also able to see the state that it's currently in so ours is still in the evaluation stage so there'll be a task that is sent to the, the evaluator that they need to evaluate this um, this customer experience and then what they'll need to do is to go into the customer experience go through all of the information on the customer experience see all of the information if it's um, relevant and then decide on the next steps that need to be taken for that customer experience and then they can enter the evaluation details and then specify whether this meets the criteria and if there's if this is a safety uh, if this safety reportable and then specify the reason for uh, saying that this meets the event criteria so in our case we know that the car is no longer drivable so um, the customer can no longer drive the car because the gearbox uh, doesn't shift to the second and third gears yeah and the reason or the cause for this we know that it's a drive shaft even though the drive shaft has been replaced uh, before it was replaced it damaged the gearbox but only picked it up much later after three weeks of driving so we'll add all of that detail there. And once that detail is added, you can also create customer experience activities on the customer experience itself, which will send tasks to uh, people to go and have a look at those experiences. Or you can create product activities. So you're creating the activities on the product itself. Okay. So in our case, we'll create the activities on the gearbox because that's what needs to, to be changed. So you can specify who gets assigned to that task. So it could be an engineer that gets assigned to that particular task. It could be a technician that gets assigned to another task. So you can create multiple tasks depending on um, what is required. So for this one, I selected myself as the person who's going to complete the task, and I don't want a reviewer. So you can also send this for a review and then specify the reviewer. And then I'll add a request here. So this is basically uh, what the assignee needs to go and do. So you can create these tasks, so it could be different tasks. So in, in this case, I'm gonna add both things that the user needs to do one is replacing the gearbox in the car number two is updating the part instances or the part serial number on the, the assembly to reflect the change that has been made on the gearbox okay. right so with this you can add you can split the tasks that i said into two different tasks but for this demonstration uh, added both tasks into one instruction okay. All right so once that is finished and then we go to quality uh, when I refresh the page then I get a task to go and respond to the activity okay so this is the next bit that we're going to be looking at, which is part instances and serial numbers. So, so with the part instances, um, they allow you to assign unique identifiers to an assembled product. So as you can see on here, uh, there's a part instance and then it shows what that unique identifier is. And it also tells you what type of unique identifier it has. So in in our case here, uh, for this particular part, our unique identifier, okay, and then 
once that is there, then I can go and create or go to the activity. And then the activity as I, as I edit it is it replace this gearbox on the vehicle with a new gearbox, but that'll be my second activity. So the first activity that I'll do in this case is to update the part instance for the top level assembly with the serial number of the gearbox. So we already have a gearbox assigned to be replaced and we already have the part number, uh, the serial number for that gearbox. So we're gonna go to the top level assembly and then update that gearbox. So going on to the top level assembly and then looking at the serial number, which is the one that was added or which is the one that the customer is complaining about. So this is the customer's uh, VIN number. Okay, so we can go on to that very same VIN number and then go to the structure itself. And within the structure, we are able to see the different uh, part instances which is, it depends on the trace code type. So it depends on the type. It could either be a lock number or it could either be a serial number or it could be a combination of lot and serial number. So in other cases, you'd add a batch number or a batch number with a serial number as to show the, the, the part's unique identifier. So in our case, we have this part that we're looking for, which is, that one right there and then when we go to it we can delocate it so this is unassigning the serial number that was assigned to this particular part and then allocating either a new one or an existing one so in our case i'm going to allocate a new one so after adding this new serial number then you'll see that it gets updated under the part instances. So this also runs, can be controlled through the change management process as well. So as part of uh, the customer complaint, a kappa could have been created. And from that kappa, a change, uh, a change um, request could have been uh, created as to go and just change or update this uh, serial number. All right. So once that serial number has been updated, the next bit that we need to look at is the actual, the physical changing of the gearbox on the car. So what we are gonna do is just take a few steps back before we go and replace the gearbox in the car and have a look at something that's very crucial, which is your service bill of materials. So in Winchell, you can create your service bill of materials from your engineering bill of materials. So as you can see on the left-hand side, I have my uh, bill of materials, which is my engineering bill of materials there. And on the right-hand side, I have my service bill of materials. And as you can see with the service bill of materials on the right hand side, it has a few more components compared to the one on the left hand side. So it shows uh, uh, consumables as well, like my gear oil, um, my uh, gaskets, my thread locking adhesive. So all of those things can be added to my service bill of materials. And then you can also update your service bill of materials without affecting your engineering bill of materials. So what will happen is that for the service engineer to go and change the gearbox or change out the gearbox and replace it with the new one, they'll need a service instruction which can be created, a service instruction manual which can be created from a service bomb. Uh, they'll also need a, uh, parts list so that they can go and collect parts that are required from stores which are additional or which are required to be able to replace the gearbox. So this is the bit that I'm going to be looking at going back to the task uh, that I'm assigned. 
This is the first bit that we're going to look at to replace the gearbox on the vehicle, knowing that we need to go to uh, the service bomb or service bill of materials for uh, this assembly. We can go to the details of this gearbox assembly and then see a higher level assembly that this gearbox is used because that gearbox gets assembled to other components before it gets uh, assembled to the car or before it gets put into the car. So this is me using that search option that we have in Winchell that allows you to just search. That's the simple search that allows you to search within Winchell. And I can see that that version is for a service uh, bill of material. And when I go to the structure, I'll be able to see that service bill of material structure. And I'm able to see all of the consumables. If you look Towards the bottom, I have my gear hole, I have my gasket, I have my bearing, I also have my thread locking adhesive, and I also have a visualization that shows me the physical parts that are going to go in there, excluding those uh, consumable parts. Okay, so from this as well, I can also get a parts list which is shown on the screen. So it lists all of the parts that I require. So if I, if the service engineer goes to uh, the stores or uh, the warehouse to go and collect the, the parts that they need, they can go with that um, parts list and then ensure that all of the parts are handed to them before they can go and replace the gearbox in, in the car. And then once they have all of that information and they've replaced the gearbox in the car, we'll go back to our customer experience and have a look at where it currently is or its state. It tells us that it's still in, in progress. And then what is required is a response and a closure for it to move to the next state of the life cycle. So going back to my uh, activity that I need to do. Looking at uh, what I need to do was to replace the gearbox on the vehicle with a new gearbox that was done and then update the part instances for the top level assembly with the serial number of the new gearbox that was done as well. So now we can add a response date to say that today I am completing this task that was assigned to me and saying that all of that has been updated. Okay. And with the part tasks as well, if I had split them into two, after updating the instance, I would have to go and complete the task. And then once the gearbox has been replaced in the car, then go and update the next task with my comments or my response for that task. And once done, select finish. Okay, so if we go back to the customer experience, we'll be able to see which uh, state my customer experience is. And I see that I'm still missing a summary. So that'll be a task that is sent back to me just to complete this task and then specify uh, whether everything that needed to be done had been done. So has yes, it was confirmed that the issue was with the gearbox and yes, it was with the gearbox and a correction was indicated and it was verified. But now we're not gonna create a kappa uh, because there's already a kappa that's addressing this issue that's already on the system. So we're gonna add a conclusion there specify why this is indeed an issue and what was done in order to fix this issue. Okay. So we know that the issue was with the drive shaft. So the drive shaft uh, damaged the gearbox. And since the drive shaft damaged the gearbox, uh, that is the reason that um, the owner of the car wasn't able to shift gears. Okay. So all of that 
you're going to add into this conclusion and then specify when this review was done, which is today. And then also, if there's any final codification, we can go and add that. If not, then we'll finish and close off our customer experience. Okay. As you can see, the customer experience has been closed. And if we look at its life cycle, we can see that it went through all of those uh, states. Yeah, right. So now that is all that um, I wanted to show you for today. So when it comes to uh, field service and uh, aftermarket, there are a couple of uh, modules that Windshield has. And if you'd like to find out a bit more about them, I will give you my details at the end of uh, this presentation. But for now, let's look at any questions that you might have. So if there aren't any questions, uh, thank you uh, very much for attending this presentation. If you'd like to find out anything technical after this session, please uh, feel free to contact me directly on my email address, wchabalala at pdsvision.us. If you have any sales queries, please uh, feel free to contact our sales uh, team. Uh, you can also visit our website which is pdsvision.com or you can visit our youtube page which is pdsvision right thank you very much